ladies and gentlemen, here in the room and somewhere, I hope so, on the internet. And uh, thank you, Nick, for your invitation. And uh, it's just a little bit embarrassing situation for me, because this is not the first time uh, we are together in a conference, but it's the first time I have to do it in English. And ah. so you will be able to compare how poor is my English compared to uh, is very good Spanish, so please accept my apologies in advance, and I will try to do my best, or at least to be brief. Um, I won't do it, but I, I will try. Uh, first project I will present to you this afternoon is part of the projects uh, participated or led by our uh, research group, Real, here at the University of Salamanca. Uh, that deal with uh, the topic of multiculturality or uh, interculturality in education. Uh, Paloma presented before one of the projects involved in this uh, line, uh, research line of projects. And uh, this is a almost finished project. Uh, it is coming to an end by the end of this month. Uh, it is a project aimed to the development of um, new approaches for history, teaching and learning using, as you will see, um, so-called uh, popular history magazines and new approaches for uh, learning history in a, a multinational and multicultural perspective. Um, the project is a, a Comenius project. No, it's, it's almost finished. Uh, we are not uh, the, the, the leader. The, the institution is the University of Oxford. This is, in some kind, a uh, um, second stage of a previous project called MIH. We did it and uh, devoted to the development of uh, learning materials for geography and history, uh, teaching and learning in secondary school. And uh, we are uh, six partners. Uh, the middle is uh, the University of Oxford. And the charge of this project, and you can see here different uh, um, popular history magazines. And uh, the charge is not simple to explain, but it is simple to understand. Um, let's take a look at this guy. If uh, you are in Germany, Maybe when, maybe when a student think about Germany and Poland, maybe the idea should be that of a, an expansion of the German territory. But when you live in Poland, you feel this as an invasion. If you are in Spain and you speak about Columbus, you are speaking on a discoverer, but from the point of, from the point of view of um, Latin American countries, Columbus, is, is not a discoverer. They haven't been discovered. They were there. <laughs> he's, he's a conqueror. And not a very good one. Better English when they went to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is quite simple for us. But it is not so simple for students in secondary school. And it's not so simple to explain them that there are different narratives in history because they usually think on science, history, maths, or whatever, as a, a very uh, strict and serious science. So if two plus two is four, that, that's not discussion, that's nothing to discuss. But this is not the thing we see in history. But they don't understand that. They are not aware of historical consciousness. And there's another gap between scientific history and popular history medicines, as they are products. They are business. And our business is to tell them the truth, so-called the truth. And that's not their business. In Spain, I had to take an approach regarding the discovery of America, much more different of 
a Mexican journal. Okay. And we have to move on also to new didactical approaches for using digital media and to let our students be aware of this historical consciousness. It's simple to understand, but it is not so simple to carry out, as you will see. I will confess some uh, good points we reached and also some problems we faced. And we didn't solve all of them yet. And the aim of this project, as you can see in this tag cloud, is uh, to create a dialogue between history teachers and media professionals. And uh, that's not simple. Media professionals are interested on um, characters, on battles, and history teachers are interested on the semiotic of the causes involving World War I. And students are not interested nor in the first nor in the second question. But we have to do so. Uh, secondly, we have to um, join different multi-perspective approaches by comparing different historical narratives in the same country, in different textbooks, and obviously in different countries. And it's not so simple. And we have to uh, approximate media education to history teaching. It is, according to some studies, it is uh, one of the subjects where technological innovation uh, is less used by teachers. <coughs> and that's a, a challenge to face. And obviously, linked to the technological innovation, uh, I come from philosophy, and I teach philosophy and social sciences and history, and here I teach something related to uh, educational guidance at the faculty. But uh, there's no interest in innovation in technology if we cannot succeed in innovating in processes and methodologies. And, and, and that's another question to face when you try to innovate with technology. There's nothing to deal with technology if you don't change your methodology. First. So we intended to achieve uh, these uh, aims through uh, the development of a baseline study. This is perfect for scholars. Uh, they love doing baseline studies. This is not for students, obviously, and this is not all for uh, history teachers at secondary school. And uh, a set of digital open educational resources with a different approach. Because they try to uh, join different historical narratives and to join the interests of curricular issues and the commercial interests of popular history magazines. And finally, a set of courses for future, both future and in-service teachers, for letting them know about this new, or maybe not so new, approach of uh, mixing uh, digital media, uh, multicultural perspectives, and so on. And the outcomes we can the, the, the next project I will present to you later uh, can't speak about uh, outcomes, but, but this is coming to an end, so we can uh, have some outcomes. The baseline study is available, and if you're interested on it, you will have a presentation on the website, so we can reach it. And we have produced up to 13 digital modules um, with translated into the, all the languages involved in the project and with the different approaches coming from the different countries related to two topics. We selected this um, history crossroads. So we selected a, a, set, a set of uh, topics um, that are present in all the uh, curricular uh, traditions in the countries involved. One is World War I, and 2014 was the anniversary uh, centenary, and the other is Columbus. And uh, in the pilot stage, we engage uh, 14 groups, and 
350 students for piloting uh, the digital models with the results I will show you later, not with tables but with some remarks. And, and we trained up to 43 in service plus 125 future teachers in these new methodologies. Four public newsletters uh, available on websites. 20 articles or conference papers in uh, uh, academic uh, spaces. And the final conference, in the, maybe, uh, less than one month ago, in Wrocław, in Poland, uh, related to the uh, history and edutainment. This is interesting because this is the address we want to point later uh, by the end of this project to move forward another new approach of history, teaching and learning. And this conference related to the history, the International Society of History Didactics was led by the project leader, Susanne Pop from the University of Oxford in Germany. And uh, achievements and difficulties we found. Honestly, more or less honestly. Um, the project itself was well uh, recognized and acknowledged uh, for secondary school teachers. They found it very interesting. Oh, what is interesting to join history magazines, not serious but popular history magazines, and history crossroad. Interesting. It's interesting to know about different ways to approach World War I in different countries in Europe. And also the digital models, I will show you briefly one of them later. Also digital models have been uh, received and acknowledged with some kind of success. Also the methodology is being well accepted, interesting the fact of mixing media and uh, journals and different approaches. But we were too much optimistic regarding maturity and historical consciousness of our students. I must confess that this is because most of the project come all comes were did it by faculty, university teachers, not secondary school teachers. Uh, I'd like to say that I represent the best of both worlds as Hannah Montana, but uh, I, I won't do it. I have been a bad uh, he, um, university teacher and maybe a bad history teacher uh, as I have been involved in this and I couldn't see it in advance. And the students are not aware of the interest involved in different narratives, especially political. And uh, um, they are not aware, they are too young, and we have to accept that. And uh, uh, digital models not always fit students' requirements. They were too difficult. Uh, we knew it. And when we uh, tasted it with students, we acknowledged that we did not have the time to change the uh, digital models since the project is going to an end. So we will learn for the next project. And uh, popular history magazines are not products to be read by students directly. They have to be decoded by teachers. It's not so simple. Let's take a piece of this very interesting article from a Poland uh, a popular history magazine. Okay, I will give you in English, no worry. In Spain, I will give you in, in English. It's better in Polish, it's a little bit difficult, but in English you can, they can't. Even in Spanish, they can't. I, I say they can't, not, not students, teachers. And uh, finally, we have been thinking about the possibility to move forward uh, strategy of gamification in history and entertainment. This could seem uh, so uh, simple and so obvious for you, because in this conference we are talking about uh, uh, gamification in a lot of sessions, but it's not so simple for history teachers. History is something so serious and you cannot try to think on gaming with this. But uh, and, game, and playing with this is using, uh, I don't know, uh, um, an Xbox game about uh, World War II and shooting a lot of Nazis or Russians, and, but, but, and that's not the point. 
in the, they are starting to be aware of the significance of painting in the construction of historical consciousness. If you think about the reasons to one historical narrative problem, and you try to uh, resolve this challenge as a student, and I as teacher, I can help you to understand this problem. Maybe I am much um, in the way to let you become aware of the relevance of historical consciousness. And maybe that's the point of, I hope, our next project or next proposal, if uh, we succeed as we did with uh, two previous editions. Thank you, and I'm here for you. Yes, sir. Did you have any intellectual property issues? There are creative problems. Uh, if you're interested in, uh, on it, I can show you in a couple of minutes one digital model in case you're interested. You can, you cannot download it. No, it is possible to download them. No, just to use. But they are creative commons, and the the digital models were created at. Uh, 